Here we're going to tie a rim chung style RS2. First thing we're going to do is just start our thread. And we're going to take the tag end of that thread and wrap it right on top of the shank of the hook. And we'll just leave it there. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to tie in the tails, which are going to be some micro fibets, also known as mayfly tails. And we're going to take uh, two of these, even them up as much as we can, and we're going to tie these in on top of the shank of the hook. And we want them to be about as long as the shank of the hook, maybe a uh, half a length longer, so one and a half times the, the length of that shank. And then we're going to tie them in right on top. And we'll take our thread forward. Trying to keep them centered. Then I can trim out the excess. Then we'll take our thread back. And what we're going to do to split these is we're going to use our thread here to split the tails. A little different than how Rim actually does it. He'll actually tie uh, his thread around each tail to, to split them. I like to kind of skip that and do a little quicker way and that's by using my thread. And I just simply pull it through the middle of the tails. That acts as kind of a wedge. That helps keep them split. Then you can capture your thread. Once you've got a few tight wraps under it, you can trim it out of there. And build up the taper to your body. Then take your thread back to the tails again. See how I have them split at about a 60 degree angle. Then we're going to take our dubbing, and uh, I'm going to use some super fine dubbing. Rim actually uses a, a beaver dubbing, or a beaver pelt, and uses the, the fur to dub. But super fine is the most common substitute. It's actually easier to work with as well. And uh, you can get lots of color variations. So you can tie your flies in olive and black and brown, uh, basically whatever color a mayfly comes in. Here I'm using just classic gray. We're going to dub a nice tight dubbing rope on our thread. We're going to wrap that dubbing around our body here, building up a slight taper to it as we wrap forward. And we're going to stop just short of the eye here a little ways, give ourselves a little bit of room. And we're ready to tie in the wing material, which is just going to be an aftershaft feather from a pheasant rump or a partridge skin. It's basically the soft, poofy under feather. We're going to tie that in right on top of the shank of the hook. You could trim out any of the fluffiness that gets trapped. You can also use CDC as well. It's another good feather substitute. And once you've got all these feathers kind of managed here, we can dub the thorax. I'm going to use the same dubbing. You could also two-tone it. You could put in a black dubbing or something that's a different color. I'm going to use the same process here, dubbing a nice tight dubbing rope on our thread. And then I'm actually going to take my dubbing and I'm going to go behind this aftershaft feather here. And what this is going to do, you can see how it's propping it up. On all Rim Chung's RS2s, he does this to keep that wing standing up rather than laying back. And it takes a few wraps here to really get it to cooperate. There we go. Then you can take your thread up to the, the eye of the hook, 
pull off any extra dubbing that you have. Now we can whip finish. I like to use black thread. It gives me a little black head right there at the front. But you can use gray if you wanted to match it. And then to trim this after shaft feather, we're going to trim it at a downward angle. We're going to pull our feather up. There we go. Basically, that'll give the fly the appearance of emerging. Looks like a little emerging wing case. That's all there is to the Rim Chong RS2. You can buy all the materials for this fly at intheriffle.com.